You've probably seen ads for this 3D scanner from RevoPoint on Instagram. Since I'm in the business of making things from 3D objects, I felt like I would buy it and give it a shot. For the past few years, I've been using photogrammetry with a regular camera to scan objects to use in my 3D scenes. So I was curious how this would compare. I'll be scanning this shoe with my Canon R5 and with this Morocco 3D scanner and doing a side-by-side -side comparison breakdown with both of the output files. This is the Morocco from RevoPoint. I got the 32 gigabyte as opposed to the 16 gigabyte. What really enticed me about the scanner in the first place is it has near and far mode. This works with both Macs and PCs, which all 3D scanners do not. This does not need to stay connected to a computer while you're using it. You can just pick it up and scan like a regular camera. And most enticing for me, this has a 48 megapixel RGB camera, which is larger than the Canon that I use. And also this is pretty cheap for a 3D scanner. The 32 gigabyte is $1,600 and the 16 gigabyte is around 1,300, which in a way is a lot, but compared to a lot of these 3D scanners that are $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. This is pretty cheap for the amount of versatility. So for the design of this thing, right when you take it out of the box, the first thing that you notice is this plasticky smell. And it's not necessarily bad, it's just, it's pretty strong. And overall, the whole camera is super light. It's very square. It honestly feels in a lot of ways like a camera from the mid 2000s. Again, not necessarily as a bad thing, but compared to all of the ergonomic camera progress that we've made, it feels like it lacks quite a bit of that. The power button is on the side, right by where the record button is. So I find myself accidentally tapping the power button to turn it off while I'm trying to start recording a new scan. It has a screen that flips up, which I think is nice. I wish that it flipped up and rotated again, more similar to like a standard mirrorless at this point. But the fact that the screen flips up is nice when you have to get low angles. You don't have to contort yourself to get all the way down there. You can just flip the screen out. You can also flip it all the way up into like a selfie mode. Both versions also come with a bunch of accessories and one of those is a turntable, which is very nice. It's a small turntable. Even an object like this shoe is kind of bordering on the biggest thing that will fit on this turntable, but it is nice to have one. With a near and far mode for something like a shoe, the shoe is like right in between both of those modes. So on far mode, you can get the whole shoe. The quality isn't as high. And on near mode, you can't get the whole shoe because the distance that it reads is pretty narrow. You have to sort of get the shoe in parts. So I've been doing the top part of the shoe, the middle part of the shoe, and the bottom part of the shoe because if you try to do all of it together, it just shows up as nothing. It just can't read it. This camera also has a weird little light on the front that in my experience kind of has a negative outcome on the overall color of the model. I guess theoretically, it's nice to be able to fill in some of those darker areas. Has not worked that well in my experience. Versatility seems like a really important part of this scanner because you can use it without being connected to the computer and it does look like a camera that you can carry around everywhere. One of the most jarring discoveries that I had when using this is that you can't really use it outside in daylight, like at all. Maybe a cloudy day, maybe at sunset or dusk or something, but daylight, it just completely blows out the exposure and there's no way to bring it back down. You can bring the exposure up, but daylight, you're, you're absolutely completely shot. So I feel like that is a pretty big negative for something that feels like you should be able to just take it outside and scan away. Inside is really the prime use for this. The battery life is okay. The website claims that you can scan for two hours. You can wirelessly send your scans from the scanner to your computer, but while that's happening, that's also draining the battery life. It's really two hours of you doing something with the scanner. And sending files wirelessly sort of takes forever, so it does really eat up that battery life. On the positive side for the battery life, it does charge really, really super fast, so. It's getting kind of low, plug it in for 20 minutes and it, it really gains a ton of battery in a short period of time. Another issue that I've ran into is there seems to be a contrast problem that goes back to the exposure thing, where if you have something like this shoe where there's white and that white is right next to a large area of black, it exposes for the white and then the black just looks like nothing. It literally comes up as transparent. So you can control the exposure, you can bump the exposure up, then you start to blow out the white to the point where it can't track. 
and it becomes difficult to get the whole thing. So you can adjust that on the fly and it is possible to get it, but it is noteworthy, again, compared to the photogrammetry process where you just shoot the object from a bunch of different angles and you never have these problems with something coming up as transparent unless it is like glass or silver or something reflective. For the actual act of scanning, there's definitely a learning curve. I don't think that you're going to just pick this up and go scan something and get a perfect scan in the first five minutes. You definitely have to try it out and get a feel for the way that the tracking works. You can shoot with this as a standalone. You also can shoot with it connected to your computer again for both Windows and Macs. And this has a bunch of benefits. One benefit is battery, so your battery is not dying while you're connected. Another benefit is that it takes a while to send the files from the device to a computer. So that's five minutes of downtime, 10 minutes of downtime, maybe 30 minutes of downtime, depending on the size of your scans and how many scans you're transferring at the same time. When you're scanning while connected to the computer, obviously it's just going straight to the computer, so you don't have to waste that time waiting for the files to transfer. The processing of the files is also much faster on a computer. You can process on the device, which is cool, I guess. I'm not exactly sure the benefit of processing on the device because it takes so much longer than doing it on a computer. Maybe if you're out in the desert or something, then I could see the benefit of being able to just process on the device and not needing a computer to be with you. But if you're out in the desert, it's also way too bright for you to use this scanner in the first place. So if you're out in the desert, perfectly at dusk, then I guess that feature is helpful. Another cool thing as you're scanning, you can pause and start back up again. And after you pause, if there's something that happened that's wrong or tracking got lost, you can press undo and it'll take steps back through the last pieces of the scan so you can get back to the point before it started to get messed up and then start again. It's very cool, it's very convenient. Again, with just using photogrammetry and polycam, you don't need to undo really. I guess if there are pieces that are kind of messing everything up, you can go back and take those pieces out. But once you kind of get the method dialed in, you don't really have that problem. There's, there's not a need to go back in that way. And overall, I would say in my experience, the tracking is pretty great. There's continuous mode and there's single shot mode. Single shot mode, of course, feels a lot more like photogrammetry. In single shot mode, I was having more trouble getting things to track. In continuous mode, it's a little more obvious the flow of everything and getting everything in line with what you just got. It just obviously is not stopping. After you're finished with your scan, there is this RevoPoint software that you then finish the models in. And you can do a one-click edit on the device itself and then send it to the computer which takes forever, probably don't do that. Or you could send it right after you finish the scan to the computer and do the processing on there, which I would recommend for the sake of time, 100%. Again, it works with Mac and Windows, which is awesome. The software feels pretty bare bones. So on a huge monitor, it is kind of hilarious that there's like seven buttons on there. But within there, you do have a lot of control. You're kind of walking through each step of getting to the final model. So it joins the point cloud. You can get rid of extra points. You can get rid of pieces of the mesh that are overlapping. It'll sort of smooth out the mesh. You can fill in holes, gets to the point of adding the texture on there. You can always kind of go back and do the same thing. So it is cool to have all that control. I feel like I don't need all that control. I love in Polycam being able to just drag it in there, wait 10 minutes, and then it just is done. And it is perfect and looks really good. So. From an overall workflow standpoint, if you have to do like 30 pairs of shoes in one day, this is definitely taking longer than photogrammetry with Polycam. Another nice thing in this software is you can merge different scans of the same object. So for this shoe, I ended up using a base scan of the whole thing, then a scan of the sole separately, then a scan of just the side because it's black and I was having that issue where the black shows up as nothing. So you're able to select all of those and have it automatically merge those together. You could also do it in more of a manual way in there, but for the shoe in particular, the automatic merging worked and you'll see what that looks like in the final model. So now for the moment that you've all been waiting for, we can get to the actual comparison with using a Canon R5 in Polycam. For the scan with the Morocco 3D scanner, I've scanned this on near mode, continuous, with the base exposure at the highest quality setting. I've also scanned this shoe with the Canon R5 in the exact way that I've previously gone over in my photogrammetry tutorial. So 
I'll put a link to that in the description if you wanna check out the exact steps for that. Basically taking a shot from every angle and then running it through Polycam for desktop. So we'll start off with the mesh from the Morocco 3D scanner. And you can already see it looks incredible. It looks so, so, so good. The lace detail is amazing. You can see all the detail of all the leather wrinkling. You can fully see this tag right here. You can even see definition from like the vans off the wall. You can even make out, you can see the tag on the side right here. You can borderline make out the, the vans off the wall on the tag. This is that issue I was talking about before with the black where it just ends up having to fill it in. So here I merged another scan for just this stripe part that merged pretty decently. And this is what it does when it shows up as just a hole and then it automatically fills it so it's not quite as perfect and you don't get the stitching, but in the rest of it, you can see every single stitch. You can see all the detail from the leather. You can see all the detail in the vulcanized sole and all the detail on, on this part right here. So it absolutely exceeds expectations. It looks really, really, really amazing. I didn't quite get enough detail in the scan up in this inside part. I'm sure it's definitely capable of it, but I didn't quite get that area in the scan. But yeah, otherwise you can see every single stitch and you can see every single little wrinkle in the detail of the leather. And it looks really, really amazing. You can see this eyelet, you can almost literally see straight through the hole to the other side. The sole as well, this was a separate scan that was merged together. The sticker on the bottom of the shoe literally in the mesh and you can almost make out what it is. Really blown away. Now we can move on to the mesh from the Polycam scan with the Canon R5. And by comparison, it's not quite as strong. You can still see all the stitching detail. You can see the eyelet, you can't see through it. The whole thing kind of looks like it's sculpted from clay, but all of the detail is there. And you know, before I use the 3D scanner, this felt like a really great amount of detail as far as I was concerned, you know? Like this absolutely is the shoe. You can tell what it is. You can see the rubber tag on the back. You can't make out what the rubber tag says. And then you would need to do another scan for the bottom to complete the whole thing there. But overall, good. Not as good as the 3D scanner mesh. So the next element here, I'm almost never just using an object in its mesh form or applying a texture to the whole thing, like making the whole thing look like it's metal. Usually for these shoes, I always need the texture of the actual color. So it'd be this red, this black, this white, extremely, extremely important. So let's take a look at those. Again, back to the Morocco. And we can see the texture is not that strong. It's okay, it depends on what you need this for, but the color is not that consistent. You can make out the vans off the wall. You can absolutely see what it is. Heel tag looks pretty good. Like I said, I didn't get enough information for this one little corner. Sole looks pretty great. If you're not looking at it super, super close, it looks okay. All, all the information is in there. These things can be fixed, like how the stripe kind of has some color variants. That could definitely be fixed. The white looks good. It almost feels like there's a bit of a, a little bit of a shadow like baked in around where the stitching is and, and maybe a little bit at the bottom down here. But overall it's good. And then this kind of like auto fill in has a weird situation happening there. It'd be good to have one more scan to be able to merge together with that area so you don't have that missing black happening. Now let's take a look at the Polycam scan. It just looks better. The black stripe, completely consistent. The, the vulcanized sole of the shoe, completely consistent. This white leather material, also completely consistent. The tag looks really good. The, the lace detail looks really nice. You can visually see the leather detail now. It wasn't showing up on the mesh the same way that it was on the Morocco skin. But once we get the texture, now it, it's, it's fully there. And you can see every single stitch. The dimension looks awesome. So honestly, this is my end use. This really is what I need. Although the mesh for the 3D scan from the Morocco looks way, way better. The fact that the texturing from Polycam looks better, I'm just, I'm gonna go with the Polycam, you know? I need my final object to look better. That's what I need to look good. For a 3D print, the Morocco scan looks really, really awesome. Or if I was trying to scan something and then make it look like it's made of metal or glass, the Morocco 3D scan is better.
but as far as our end use to use this for an animation or use this for a still image, put this in some kind of crazy environment, this polycam scan is holding up way better. Maybe the bottom, not so much. So if there's a better way to texture this Morocco scan, then that would be better, but given what we have, given the options, this is where I am with the comparison. I'll also put a link to both of these files in the description so you can play around with them and check them out for yourself and come to your own conclusion. So here are my thoughts in conclusion. You don't need to get the larger 32 gigabyte version. It makes sense to be able to scan larger objects, but if you can't really use this thing outside generally, then how big are the objects that you're going to scan if you can only be inside? If you're scanning cars, I guess, and you have a huge studio or a huge garage or something, then maybe it'll be nice to have the 32 gigabyte version, but for tabletop things and most things that a normal person can fit inside, I don't really think that you need that. That package also comes with a couple other things. Most of the things that it comes with, most of the accessories, the bag, the turntable, all these dots, it comes with the smaller version too. So I would just say to me, it's really not worth it to get the 32 gigabyte version. I would say that this is not a replacement for a photogrammetry with a regular camera. It's definitely awesome to have in the toolbox for things that photogrammetry is not good at, which would be shiny objects, which this is not completely awesome with either, but for certain things that are sort of in the middle, I, I think that this could be great to have in the toolbox if you have the funds for that. And if your intention for buying this 3D scanner is to scan objects and then maybe 3D print them, it's incredible for that. It's so, so, so awesome for that. The mesh looks so amazing. I fully think it's worth it for that if that's what you're in the business of. But for me, for making visuals and having to be concerned with the way the final shoe looks in the animation or in the image, it just ends up looking better with this regular process of photogrammetry as I've already been doing it. If you were starting today and you needed to decide between the two, you wanna be able to scan 3D objects, do you get like a mirrorless camera like the Canon R5, or do you get a 3D scanner like this Revo Point Morocco? I would say that the price difference is so drastic. If your background is more 3D and you're really in the 3D world, if you do not have a use for a full frame mirrorless camera, I would go with the Morocco definitely. If you have any use for a full frame camera, if you're making videos, if you're taking stills, if you're compositing 3D stuff, and you have other things to utilize that camera for, and you need and want to do photogrammetry with that camera, I absolutely recommend going with the camera. Again, there's a big disparity in price. Obviously there are cheaper, great cameras than the Canon R5, but I would say if you're gonna do other stuff with it, 100% recommend just getting a full frame mirrorless. If you're just doing 3D scans and you don't wanna pay extra money for the nice camera, I would say go with the Morocco, knowing some of the limitations that I've mentioned already. And as always, I appreciate the likes, I appreciate the subscriptions. Let me know your thoughts, let me know if there's anything I missed, let me know if I should do a follow-up, and if there are any other kind of products that I should review or any other 3D scanners. I'd be happy to, so let me know in the comments.